Easter Monday football here at the Anthony Spalling Sports Complex, Harborview versus Montego Bay United. And we are expecting a great match between both teams who have different objectives, certainly. But three points, certainly the prize that they go for. A draw won't do it for Montego Bay United. They need every point they can garner to keep their playoff hopes alive as the FIFA banner is before the officials getting ready to walk out. Dean Smith in commentary, Chris Taylor, the analyst, and we'll guide you through the proceedings as the players walk out behind the officials. The Santos had a lot to say, Chris Taylor. Uh, he recognizes in a very pragmatic way that at all costs, they must win. In your expectation, what are some of the keys for them to win today? I think continuing with the positive style of football that they've played over the last few weeks. Uh, Mobile United, they have been quite aggressive. They have been a lot more organized. I think now they know their roles early in the season under the Santos. They, I think there's a bit of uncertainty as to the, as to the chemistry and how things how things would have gone they were they were trying to find build partnerships and, and that chemistry but i think now it's here it's a more or less a consistent starting lineup for them and as i said the important players the important pieces on his chessboard are, are finding form at the right time a nice blend of also experience and youth i think that plays a part in in, in building a, a promising future so i really like montego bay's chances and how they've played over the last couple of months are really positive and well water was finding good form as well but i think this one will come right down to the wire between these two teams so on claudia ferreira offering up prayers of course it's that blue season of course the easter season Taryn robinson the referee damien williams ricardo mckenzie the assistant and the fourth official stefan duar was on duties yesterday as well stefan duar as the fourth official yeah. Owen Gordon, the captain there for one of the United Order and Harding for Harborview. Here's a started lineup for Harborview. Perhaps uh, a lineup that will become very accustomed to Chris Taylor. Glen Glenroy Samuel, the Trinidadian in gold, Order and Harding, Romain Brackenbridge. Garth Stewart and the keyboard Jones, the back four. Kasim Priestley, Demar Rose, and Joshua Anglin in the middle of the park. And Ruan Brown, Amar Thompson, and Andre Fagan up top. They're coached by Ludlow Bernard. Yeah, 4 3 3 is what they're playing. There's been big problems between the sticks. Glenroy Samuel comes back into the lineup at the expense of Romario Palma, who, as I said, it's been a real struggle um, between the sticks for them. Lots of mistakes for the goalkeepers, and it's uh, been a headache for, for Ludlow Bernard. Here's Montego Bay United, William Ferreira in goal, the Brazilian, Josiah Trimmingham, Luca Lima Correa, Benaldo Wellington, Johan Weatherly, Jordan Fletcher, Bode Nish, Devaro McKenzie, Owen Gordon, Brian Brown, and John Claudio Ferreira, their head coaches, Nida de Santos. Yeah, 4 3 3 as well. The Brazilians have done so well this season, really coming to age in, in, in the league, especially Correa and Ferreira and company but yeah lots of experience with gordon and brian brown leading the line somewhat 80 goals between them in terms of premier league in terms of their premier league career so lots of experience in terms of a know-how and then you have for example weatherly which will add a, who will add a lot of pace to that attack as well so dangerous unit here Moby. creativity obviously will come mainly from their number 10 in Juan Claudio Ferreira but as you said of recent in recent weeks they have certainly sheared the goals amongst them which is another good sign not heavily reliant on one player the reverse fixture was a two-all tie that was on the final day of the year 2023 and uh, I'm sure Montego United won't want a sheer of points here they can't if they are to progress to the playoffs. Ambitious attempt there from Harborview. Keeping William Ferreira alive and alert. Couple of Montego Bay players as well. 
would have worn the shirt at Hobby View at some stage. Of course, Brian Brown, who's their leading goal scorer, joint leading goal scorer so far this season with five, actually won the Golden Boot in the shirt of Hobby View that season, managed 19 goals. And yeah, here as well. Wellington also played for Harbour View, so too Weatherly. So. know about the Harbour View Club very well. Rose played out well that occasion to throw in for Harbour View. Here's the head coach of Harbour View, Lord Bernard. Beside him is assistant Sean Fraser. Here's Montague United trying to play up from the back with Wellington. Well, already a big deal here for Harbour View. <laughs> well, you just wonder if the headache is, is continuing yet again. Glenroy Samuel, not sure what he was thinking, picks up the yellow card, handling the ball outside of the area. And, yeah, I, I, over the last couple of months, it's been crazy what has been going on with the, with the Harbour View goalkeepers. Clearly outside of the area. What was he thinking, Glenroy Samuel? And he would have known, being on the edge of his ear, that once he would have extended his arms like that, he'd have to have made contact outside. And, you know, maybe in his view, he was afraid that it would have been a goal had he not done that. <laughs> it has been a tough time in between the sticks for Harbourview and the... Replacements haven't really impressed either. It's a dangerous position to have a kick. Go in, Gordon. San Claudio Ferrer there as well. Gordon will take it. Gordon to the goal! It's an early goal again. Montego Bay United put in Harborview under all sorts of problems early. And uh, yes, it was self inflicted, Chris Taylor. And that man again, the Achilles heel of Harborview. Well, not only is it that man again, it's that position again. All keepers that Ludlow Bernard have used this season have caused problems. Excellent free kick from Owen Gordon. Beautiful into the far corner. Samuel was there but couldn't get close. Starting outside of the target and bending in. That's a beautiful free kick from Owen Gordon. Lovely. And yet another goal on the season for their number 27. Fourth of the season for Gordon. 50th in his Premier League career. Owen Gordon, another player who has lifted the golden boot in the, on the, in the season that Moby United last won the Premier League 2015-16. Won the golden boot, Owen Gordon, and yeah, that was lovely. But again, as you said, an early goal. Just what he wanted. Just what they were trying to prevent out of you. And perhaps better days aren't coming after all mm. for Harbour View. It's almost a stamp now that you'll concede a goal in the first <laughs> 10 minutes of play. You're so unkind, Chris Taylor. <laughs> Neither the Santos, very pragmatic in his interview. And I'm sure he has an inner smile seeing them go ahead in just the fourth minute of the encounter. Amazingly, Lotte Bernard continues to mention that Harborview, despite the poor performances that they've been able to put on show, the players have really been committed in training and still not kind of seen that, the, the results of that in their on-field performances, but at least uh, that positive can go into another year. But you've seen players for Harborview so far this season rise to the occasion, play when Joshua Anglin, Demar Rose to another extent. 
the captain has led well at times. There was, before his move, Shaquille Bradford, who was big amongst the goals. In fact, he's had more success at Harbourview this season than at Mount Pleasant. Yeah. Only two goals in the shirt of Mount Pleasant, eight for Harbourview and going well. So you have had players, but to, to concede goals like that, as you said, from goalkeeping errors, it's tough. It's Here's deflating from a Harbourview perspective. Yeah, must be a tough pill to swallow. Here's Weatherly trying to build for Montego United, sends it, it's intercepted well. And to be fair to, to Samuel, it's been sheared amongst the three. It's been Romaria Palma, David Martin, as well as himself, Glenroy Samuel, who started the season beautifully, Samuel. In fact, there were lots of big talk about him that, you know, coming to the club from Trinidad and Tobago, the fact that he's had a national caps under his name, and he started the season really well, positive, and then all of a sudden something just went wrong. A few errors chipping in, then lost his place, and his replacements have, have had some serious bloopers as well. It's a position that many individuals believe you have to really be settled in and just one bad result can throw off how you, you function. And you really have to have mental uh, grit about you to shake off a bad result and uh, deliver at the highest level in subsequent games. But that hasn't been the experience for him at all. And the substitutes who have come on to replace him, they themselves have had horrendous times. David Martin, Palma, they've all struggled, as you mentioned. Kima Jones has this kick for Harborview. Perhaps an April Fool drop. Wellington. Ball played forward. Garth Stewart will be able to handle that one. Here's John Claudia Ferreira. Got the shot off, but it was intercepted. Offside flag went up. Jones for Harborview. Back to the play to watch Garth Stewart Priestley now. Former national only 20 players, Kasim Priestley. Did well, especially at the junior Kingston College. to Wellington. Wellington. They initially with that poor clearance. It's a throw in for Harborview once more. Fagan. Nothing there for him. Yeah, but that should have been a free kick to have a view. That's a clear handball. I think it was a day niche right there, boxing the ball away from Andre Fagan. And to be honest, Tyrone Robinson was facing it. Well, that went by and here they come Weatherly. Shot from distance. Jordan Fletcher there. Cannot give Fletcher that kind of room from that kind of range on his left foot. He will certainly hurt you. And maybe lucky our harbour view that that wasn't on target because the pace behind that would have had Samuel in a lot of trouble. I, I reckon that the wind perhaps worked in harbour view's favour because it's a it's a wind going away from the goal, so it would have veered the ball to the mercy of uh, Glenroy Samuel. Harding, the captain. Trying to break for Harborview. Oh, 
second corner kick for Harbour viewing the encounter now. Dangling with the delivery. Still alive in the area. Korea manages to head it out. Gordon with a big clearance, boots it forward. Rhodes, send it forward for Fagan. Oh yeah, that was a good attempt. Thompson now. Oh. Poor finish in the end from Thompson. Absolutely poor. That was a lovely ball over the top. Was it Okima Jones with the delivery? It was Demar Rose Demar actually, Rose. yeah. Yeah, really has that creativity about him, Rose. And look at this. What vision that is. Perfect waiting. Oh, Fagan, he's got to do better. To be fair to Fagan, he, he did the hit the target. Yeah. Uh, a good save in the end, you would say, from the Brazilian. Uh, fair to Fagan. Yeah, uh, he I did guess well. he, he kept his eye on it, did the most he could. But yeah, the follow-up shot from Thompson left a lot to be desired. Offside on that occasion. Here's Ron Brown trying to navigate on the right hand side of the attack for Harborview. Still has the ball, has an option, goes the way of Anglin, chips it forward now. Jones back in there. That was a poor pass though. Needed a bit more weight on the pass. Here's Owen Gordon now, going the other way for Montego Bay United. Sent wider to Weatherly. Played forward for Gordon. Sends it across. Still alive for Montego Bay United with Gordon. Weatherly in the area, can't shoot. Got the shot off, but it was deflected. Still alive though. Can he sparkle here? Looks to be Brian Brown. Couldn't get it on target on that occasion. Yeah, the Fletcher. veteran striker. Yeah, Fletcher was asking, but the, bro the touch before that from Brown was poor. The nice ball played into Brown. I just thought he would have let fly. One touch to control and then the hit. The touch took him away from goal and then the chance was wasted. But even on that occasion, turning onto his left foot, did have Fletcher waiting and even Ferreira as well. Had he waited that pass perfectly, Pereira could have just moved on to it without taking a touch and finish. So, again, we've seen so many times this season, not with Montego Bay alone, where teams have had the one goal advantage and numerous chances which they have not capitalized on and it has come back to hurt them. Interesting to note, though, they've really been able to open up the Harborview defense on quite a few occasions, has Montego Bay United so far. And here they come again. Here's Demar Rose for Harborview. Anglin turns away from Nish. Still Anglin in the middle of the park, gets it in the way of Fagan, but took a deflection out. Corner kick for Harborview. They've had uh, all the corners so far, Harborview. Thompson still alive. Montego Bay United able to clear. Fletcher loses possession. Here's Jones. Indecisive in passing, gets the shot off. And William Ferreira alert again. How did you ever see a shot from Akima Jones? Perhaps he heard my most recent critique of him. Yeah, player down in Jordan Fletcher. Just getting a bit of a hit before that thought there should have been a foul. Referee Tyrone Robinson said no. I don't think there was much in it, but to get a bit of a bone Fletcher. Tyrone Robinson. 
delaying there. This was a moment just before the Odin where it was obvious to me that Robinson should have blown. Just look at this work here. Fagan controlling the ball. Look at that from Odin Nish. Clearly that he's, he's clearly outside of the area. But that's a, such an obvious handball. And if you were to pull it back a little bit, you would see that Robinson was in an excellent position, the, the, the referee, to see that facing the player as well. That has got to be a free kick. And to be honest, from that play, Montego Bay actually broke, nearly scored, had an opportunity at the opposite end. And how controversial that would have been. But I, I dare say that probably could have been a free kick. And even a booking to Nish, which, as the game goes on, could be a big deal, considering the position that he's playing as well. Here's another look at it. Look at where Tyrone Robinson is facing it well. The hand front on. He's got to be making that call. It was so obvious. Fagan appeals, but obviously the play continued. But it was very obvious that Nish boxed the ball away from Fagan's control. Anyhow, some things will go miss. Will be will be missed. That was one of them. Intent there, Demar Rose clipping the foot of Lucas Correa. It's Montego Bay. Intercepted well by Jones, plays it forward. Can Fagan get on the end of it? No, he can't. Gordon. Phil Gordon, Jones tracking back. He regains possession well away in Gordon to Fletcher. Fletcher with skill, gets it across. Still alive, well, half of you able to play it out now. Rowan Brown, unable to get on the end of it, or Dean Nish. Here's Anglin. Here's Anglin. Gets it to Rose. Harding. Back to Anglin. Not as crisp as I'm sure a little Bernard would have wanted. And yeah, but to give Montego Bay credit, uh, recovering well the midfielders and the flank forwards as well. If you notice, you Weatherly tucking in, getting involved. Ferreira adding pressure to the midfield of, of Harborview and forcing mistakes. That's something that the Harborview midfield not doing as well in terms of recovering. So hence, Montego Bay finding a, a lot more space in the defensive third of Harborview. Just look at the commitment at times. I mean, yes, Brian Brown obviously holding the line, but the rest of the Montego Bay unit committed to ball retention, getting back, putting in the yards, putting in the tackles, closing the spaces. I mean, obviously, Brown is the point man, at least at this moment. Uh, obviously, there might be some rotation as the game goes on, but Brown will hold his position there. But everyone else getting involved to close the lines, that's important. And as you said, earlier that half of you Montego Bay have exposed them quite a bit but again it's been left a lot of times to just the back line what about the midfielders as well yeah Rose not necessarily known for his defensive capability sometimes angling not as committed to that yeah especially at the he's stage of the advanced. season now he's very <laughs> advanced as we see him here so what that does mean it leaves it to Priestley alone Angley. That was a good attempt there from Omar Thompson. Yeah, good snapshot. Maybe I'm sure neither the Santos won't be happy that a, a lateral ball like that could have found his way all the way across his 18 yard area inside of it. And Thompson still able to get away a shot one time. Look at that into the area. Too much space that to give angling. 
and Thompson was being closed but not quick enough. Had that been on target, they would have been in trouble. Mobe. Defending never an easy part of football, not at the not an area that persons generally like to do, but it's something that you have to be committed and you have you, the awareness, the concentration has to be up right throughout. Brown trying to find on Claudio Ferreira. Well read by Anglin and played out of touch. A lot of times, if you even look at the coaching ground, it, it, a lot of it sometimes is about attacking set pieces and so on, and not many rewards are given for defending. So it's something that you always have to be aware of as a coach to reward defenders for doing a good job because it's not one of those glorious things of football. Not the glamour. No. First corner kick for Montego again. I did. How was you patient in build up? Priestley. Anglin pushing forward. Brackenridge trying to chip it forward. Good take that. Brian Brown still there. Gets the shot off. That attempt from Ron Brown did well to control that ball from Ramin Brackenrich, I believe it was. Turned well in the post and able to get the shot off. Goalkeeper still being treated for Montego Bay United, William Ferreira. His free kick. In the fourth minute, the all-important goal at the moment for Montego Bay United, Wayne Gordon. Here's another look at the sequence of play. Glenor Samuel out of the area. Brian Brown was applying the pressure. And, uh, oh my, how did Owen Gordon deliver? Yeah, picture perfect, really.
Whistle on the play there. John Claudy Ferreira fouled. Josiah Trimmingham sends it forward. Wellington doing well to turn here. Here is Nish. Good header from Weatherly. Fletcher. Can be dangerous, Fletcher. Korea to Weatherly. Good turn. He gets it across. Almost as it was played out by the Harborview defense there. Goes across to deal with the corners. Taken short. Here's Ferreira. Glancing header. Glorious opportunity. That had to be cleared with great alertness from Joshon Anglin. Lucas Correa was in glory land. It's still alive for Montego Bay. Head on to goal from Trimmingham. Glenroy Samuel won't make mistakes like that again. You hope. Well, this time he was well inside his box, so no worry for him there. <laughs> the only way he could have blundered there was to carry that into the goal with him. Yet yeah, Montego be a few half chances, and really they look the more threatening of the two when going forward for sure. And this is a fixture that Montego Bay have struggled in recent times. If you think about it, their last win against Harborview came back in October 2018. Montego Bay United, a 2-1 win. In fact, that year they did the double over Harborview in 2018. A 2-1 win was the last though in October. Since then, it's been all Harborview. When you look at the overall head-to-head, -to -head, it doesn't really tell the full story. It actually looks pretty even. Mobe have won six, Harborview have won six, and there have been eight draws. But in recent time, it's been difficult runs for Montego Bay, so I'm sure that's something that Little Bernard will have in the back of his head and something that will bring confidence to Harbour View. In fact, in that match in 2018, Odin Nish was a man who scored the double in the 2-1 win. At that time, playing more of an, as an attacker, his nickname is Pogba, by the way, Odin Nish. He played more in the forward side of things, attacking midfield or forward, now playing as a centre-back. But yeah, there he is, Nish. More for the look than the style of play. <laughs> the nickname Pogba, but did play as a centre forward. Here's Wellington. Gets it across. Can't get the header on. Brian Brown. Done for pace there, Brown. Good overlapping run by Wellington. It was. But I just thought the cross had a little bit too much on it. It actually forced Brian Brown's head backwards. And so he wasn't able to control it. But again, too much space. And even Brown, even though he didn't get the header right, he had a lot of space around him. Not sure where the defending or the coverage is there for Harbour View. Ever so often you see the slow build up from the back from Harbour View. Not the lateral passes. Not really opening up the Montego Bay United presser in, in any great extent or any of the te any other team that they've played. Not sure why that has really been their modus operandi. Here's Montego Bay United once more. Here they come again. Well, he stripped to the ball on that occasion. Uh, 
Here they come. Here's Fletcher. Fletcher! Rattling the advertising board. Doesn't score many with a right boot. Jordi and Fletcher let fly on that occasion. But again, the pass from Brown into Fletcher was way too easy. The coverage there. Demar Rose not tracking well. Kasim Priestley caught blindsided. And again, it was an easy avenue into the 18 yard area from Montego Bay. Always a problem when you also view the stage of the season. Half of you, no chance of going forward, no chance of being relegated. Defending, not the kind of thing you enjoy doing. Now, a half chance that for Andre Fagan has had his few opportunities in this game. Snap head on that occasion before the snap volley say, from the left foot. Maybe they don't enjoy scoring either because that was a wonderful opportunity for Fagan. Rohan Brown couldn't have played that pass any better. Fagan had time, space, and a, and a, a comfortable height, you would say. But still got it wrong. Didn't even hit the target. And that's been an era since the exit of Shaquille Bradford that they have struggled as a potent centre forward. Harborview. That's an era that they'll have to look to adjust in the off-season. I think they'll have to go to the window and look to do some business. Andre Fagan, very useful player, now 36 years of age though. He can't be the man that you're depending on for all your goals. It's just not going to happen, especially at the stage of his career. I think he would play very well, Andre Fagan, as a secondary forward. Keeper wants more down. Crown treatment. Not the Bernard, though. Chris has conceded as much concerning Andre Fagan that you know the individuals that he plays around have not really stepped up and delivered at the level that he would have expected this season. He recognizes that Andre Fagan doesn't have the legs to, to the kind of running and uh, the, the darts that you need from a center forward just to get in behind the defense and get space. Looking to use him more, as, as I said, uh, Andre Fagan, I think, coming back to the Jamaican Premier League, looking to give back to Harborview, probably more in terms of helping the young center forwards to find their way. So as I said, more playing as a secondary, almost like a mentor to some of the young players. Andre Fagan has played majority of his senior career in Vietnam and played what he has had over 150 appearances in Vietnam, scoring lots of goals. And when you look at, he hasn't spent a lot of time in the, in, in, in the Jamaican Premier League. So yeah, coming back here at 36 years of age, you can't be looking to him as your, as your main man. And I thought with the partnership, with, when he was playing alongside Bradford, that was a good kind of setup for Harborview. Bradford eager to make strides internationally and otherwise, scoring a lot of goals. And Fagan could play as a, almost like the support forward. Or even off of the bench. But now, with Bradford out and nobody else really coming in, it's been left to him alone and, and, and Harborview have struggled to score consistently. Correa takes it short to Fletcher, gets it back. Correa. There you see the examples again. Here's a chance. Here's... Oh, my. He was too quick there for his own good, Jordan Fletcher. Got it all the way out of touch. Well, it's actually a corner. It was blocked on the line, Fletcher. 
Just look at this here. But this is too easy. Rose and Priestley have to be covering better than that. Fletcher, lovely skill here to round the goalkeeper. Look at it here. Kicks it, and then it's, yeah, Stewart was back to tow it out. Scuffed the finish, though, did Fletcher. But I think even if he had connected well, Stewart would have blocked it. Lovely skill, though. Similar kind of move you'd have aligned with a, another left foot of yesteryear, maybe in a blue and white shirt. No longer with us. <laughs> Here's Thompson. Rhodes. Unable to get the pass off. And John Claude Ferrer under pressure now. Ron Brown did well. Able to clear eventually Ferreira. It's now with Akima Jones for Harborview. His delivery. Headed out of touch. It's the corner kick for Harborview. Jones with the corner kick. Header on goal was easily held by Ferreira. Ron Brown. Thompson. Back to Brown. Fletcher. God, Stewart able to play out now. Mackenzie in possession now for Mobe United. Here's a goal score, Gordon to Wellington. Too much being shown there on that occasion to Akima Jones. He played out for a corner kick. Or was it a throw? It was. Here's Gordon. Still Gordon. Still Gordon. Can he get the shot off? No, he can't. Still Gordon, though. Weatherly doing lots of good work. Weatherly link up play has been good. He's again. Is Mackenzie unable to find a player in red on that occasion? Cab of you looking in all sorts of problems. There's an an eerie feeling of unease in their defense. Weatherly got the shot off.
Correa to Gordon. Gordon was trying to find Fletcher. Can't do it. Intercepted. Plays it forward. Wellington. Couldn't keep that one alive. Download the Sportsmax app today. Get in the Google Play or the Apple App Store. And see all the action. Of course, the final day of Crypto 2024 on the Sportsmax app. And so much more in football and track and field. And the big one, the Olympic Games, coming up in the summer. It's all available on the Sportsmax app. Ball played forward. Trimingham doing well there. Still alive for Harborview. Here's the header on. Over the top. Harding with the delivery on that occasion. Ruan Brown unable to get it on target. Off camera, drawn in Fletcher, requiring medical treatment. Had a shot of the Tivoli assistant coach, Orlando Clark. Of course, Montego United will play Tivoli in the final regular season game. He's scouting his next opposition, Orlando Clark. Look at this, Chris Dale. It's another free kick. You know, in Gordon territory. Yeah, almost on the same blade he took the previous one. I wonder how Glenroy Samuel will react to this. Will he go far post again? It was a beauty, the first one, Owen Gordon. Nothing the world could have done about it. In fact, Glenroy Samuel was actually towards his far post, obviously, because he was expecting the world to do his job and still couldn't save it. Owen Gordon once more into the wall alert and gets the rebound but plays it into the path of Ron Brown who gave it away in the first of six minutes added on to the first half Chris Taylor I bet you would never guess what was my sermon topic yesterday no clue victory in added time <laughs> you need to have a listen I'll send you the video well they certainly can't execute the victory just yet even if they where to find a goal here? Look at that change though. Jordan Fletcher off. That's unfortunate for him and Montego Bay. Daniel Reed is on.
Jordan Fletcher limping on the sidelines. I just wonder if it was that knock earlier. Nearing the start of the game where I'm not sure who it was that ran into the back of him and caused a problem. I think hit him on his knee. And if he hasn't probably if he hasn't fully recovered from that Fletcher, that's unfortunate. And Mobile certainly wouldn't want to lose him, especially with the playoffs looming. Brown, he did well to turn and fire first time. Ferrer, though, was equal to the task. Problem with the knee confirmed for Jordan Fletcher, Kima Jones there. Showing him some rough treatment in that passage of play. Much thought of the replacement though, number 31, Daniel Reed. 25 years of age now, actually started his career at Sandy Park FC. Daniel Reed, Sandy Bay, I should say, actually, not Sandy Park. Sandy Park is in Kingston. But yeah, Sandy Bay, before moving to Reno, and then Cavalier. He's been around a bit. Still looking for his first goal at this level, though. Entertaining player. three seasons at, at Cavalier before making the move to Montego Bay United. Daniel Reed. Here's Harborview. Rose. Jones. Corner kick for half of you. <laughs> Referee has seen enough of the first half. Not sure the full six minutes were played. Well, six minutes indicated by the fourth official for added time, but the all-important goal in this half, converted in the fourth minute by Owen Gordon. Kenroy Samuel getting the yellow card for handling the ball outside of the area. And my, my, how did Owen Gordon respond with a kick of beauty, curling it into the far corner, and Montego United getting what they need at the moment. A 1-0 cushion going into the second half. And as it stands, three points that will bring them level on points with Waterhouse as they continue to vie for a playoff spot in the Rio Nefe Jamaica Premier League. How about you? They've been out of sorts. Montego Bay United have been all over them. One at the half. We return with more 